Hello, Cherries. Welcome to Live Jerry Cherry Sunday, episode 141. And in today's video, I'm going to show you the C shape A chord from the cage system for soloing, for guitar soloing. And this is really, really, really cool. The cage system is amazing, but we're going to take just one aspect of it. I'm not going to really dive too deep into you know, the cage system, but we're going to take one of the chords from it the C chord, the C right here, that everybody knows and loves. It's a cowboy chord. I wonder if C stands for cowboy. <laughs> no. But we're gonna take this, this easy shape right here and um, we're gonna bring it all the way up to here, to A. Really, really cool way to play chords. But um, as usual, I will put a timestamp in the description to let you know exactly when the lesson starts because I want to say hello to a few of my friends here in the chat. Hello, Pekka Blues. Good to see you. Give you a round of applause. Yay! All right, Scott Olson. Good morning to you. Give you a round of applause as well. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, hopefully you got your guitars ready and you're ready to rock. You ready to rock out with me here for a little bit here on a Sunday afternoon? I'm not sitting on the sofa on a Sunday afternoon. I'm sitting on a on a piano bench here <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon. Miller Light, word up. What's up, Paul? I'll give you a round of applause. <laughs> so good to see you. Well, I'm not drinking a Miller Lights just yet. I still have my coffee here. But uh cheers to you. I'm trying to wake up still. Had a long, crazy weekend. I probably slept about maybe six hours this weekend. <laughs> I uh, flew into Rhode Island on on um, Thursday, actually, and got a little bit of sleep Thursday night. But I played a gig Friday, so I was up really early Friday, and we did a gig at the um, Stadium Theater and. Wound socket, and I always say Connecticut for some crazy reason, but it's, it's Rhode Island. And uh, you know, Paul Merrill, you're getting a, getting a mug shot. What does that mean? What is that mug shot? You're not arrested, are you? <laughs> um, so I was in a uh, Rhode Island, and uh, it's so cool there. People are so great. Um, and we played. It's an ABBA tribute band that I played with called ABBA Cadabra. It was a lot of fun. We played there last year. And they invited us back. It was a sold out amazing show there and it was really fun but uh afterward i after we were done i came back to the hotel slept about two hours and then um flew saturday morning at 6 30 a.m back to uh, new york where i came home and uh got my stuff together to go do a gig with the disco band where i play bass in and then played last night to an amazing show at a place called the boathouse in tobe beach right in Long Island, right on the water by Jones Beach. And then came home at like 3 o'clock in the morning and slept for a couple hours. And I uh, got up and started, and I brushed my hair. <laughs> and here I am. So, uh, let's see. Uh, you want to buy a t-shirt? What kind of shirt? A Jerry Cherry shirt? <laughs> sure, I do. You got a Paul Merrill shirt? I'm interested. Very interested. So, Without further ado, let's uh, let's get into some of this this stuff here. So I hope you had a great weekend too. Hopefully you got a little bit more sleep than I did. So we take the C chord here. I'm using my telly here today, so I'm really happy about that. You know, telly's playable. We'll, we'll see what the critics and the uh, think about the uh, if it's set up properly. <laughs> we'll see what they have to say eventually in the long run. Alba. It was great. Alba was at the show last night at the Boathouse. She's one of our biggest fans and friends. Alba, thank you, Alba. Give you a round of applause. So good to see you this morning. And thank you for your expertise. Well, I wouldn't go that far, Alba, but uh, I'll take that. <laughs> thank you so much. One dollar for your shirt. All right. I'll take, uh, I'll take five of them. All right. <laughs> I'll take one extra, extra, extra large. 
and I'll make uh, five smalls out of them and sell them, make a little profit. See, I'm always thinking. <laughs> Keep one for myself, of course. So, uh, all right, well, hopefully you can hear my guitar here. So, you know, you look at this chord and you're like, you know, it's a very simple C shape chord. It's a C chord. You know, when you see this, it's pr one of the, probably the first things you'll learn on guitar is this C. But there's a little bit more that you could do to it as well. You could take this C and you could, uh, you could move it up to here. And now it's an A chord just by moving it up here. Up to the A note. Make that telly twang. I'll try my best. So, trying to make a twang for you. <laughs> and um, so, going back a little bit, the CAGE system, it's basically, it's an acronym. C-A-G-E-D stands for the C chord, the A chord, the G chord, the E chord, and the D chord. But we're not going to get too deep into the CAGE system. We're going to take just one chord from it. And that's the C. And they're basically just shapes. So, like I was saying, you got uh, the C shape right here. And you can take it, you can play it any note anywhere if you just take it and slide it up. But of course, you know, in the C chord, you have a, you have a G that's open, right? So you have to kind of bar it. If you're going to play a D, you got to play like this. I'm sure you've done this before. You play an E chord like this. It's basically the same shape. It actually, it's not basically. It is the same shape. It's the same shape. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. So today we're focusing on, on the A, because I have a backing track, which is basically an A shuffle, and I'll send it to you. If you want a copy of it, this backing track that I created in A, just email me, info at Jerry Cherry, and I'll send it to you. And um, so A's a good, um, good key here. So it looks like a C chord, right? But it's a C shape, because when we move it up to here, it's an A chord, but it's got the same shape. And what we're going to do is we're going to play some, some licks and some riffs around this chord. And what's really cool and the beauty of that is that wherever you play it, you have all those same licks that you've learned inside here. Like, for instance, if I play, um, if I play something like... If I'm in D, I do the same thing here. Same thing in C. So it's really, that's the beauty of this cage system. <clears throat> it's really cool. So we could take, um, you know, lots of different approaches, like different scales and different licks, and, um, and play over this fun stuff. <clears throat> so if you're enjoying this so far, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I go live every week here at 12 o'clock, and uh, we have a good time <clears throat> hanging out, playing guitar. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, let's see. Now, what's really cool about this, too, is we're going to try to be as disciplined as possible, because, you know, you have a tendency of, or I do, of working on one thing, and next thing you know, you're noodling all over the place, and you're playing everywhere. But if we could just, um, for a little while today, not play anything, but... <clears throat> what we're going to do inside this shape right here. It's a good discipline. And I got this cool new pedal, which sounds really good with this, um, this guitar. And I found out after I bought it that a lot of people with Telecasters use this pedal. It's a Nobles Distortion Overdrive. It's called the o ODR Mini. It's a mini version of, of the larger one, I guess. And it sounds like 
a little overdrive. It's not much. Like... That's with it. Here's without it. You know. That's without it. Nice little overdrive, and it sounds pretty good with this guitar. It sounds great. It's the first time this morning I've heard it with um, this guitar, so it's pretty surprising. Pretty happy about that. And uh, yeah, because I used this on the on the ABBA gig that I did on, on Friday night. Friday night. <clears throat> so hopefully you're uh, having some fun, drinking some coffee or some Miller Lite, whatever you're drinking out there today. <laughs> so. All right, so check this out. Here's what we're going to do. Here's the C, C shape A chord. Now, easy way to play it is just to grab it. Or you could bar this, this sort. Bar this finger right here on the, um, on the ninth fret. And then lay down your fingers like that. Like bar this down here like that. So essentially it's like a capo. Because, you know, in the G chord right here, you have that open string. So you're compensating for the openness. If you slide it up, if I played like a C up here, you know, it would be, uh, actually it would still work. Just like that. And really what's cool about this position as well is you can make a, a C major 7 chord out of it, like this. Which is really pretty. Give you a closer look at it. So here's the chord. So to make that C major seven chord, I gotta take, I gotta add a B, or I gotta add a G sharp note in there, which is right here. So I'm basically just taking, instead of, I'm taking out the fifth, which is an E note right here, and I'm playing it here. All the rest of the notes are the same. See that? Playing this note. pretty sounding chord. It's the seventh degree. Is that chord? Really pretty. Now back to the regular A chord. You could play a, an A7 chord here. playing the flat seven. So you're basically just taking that major seven, and you're going down a half step. The same thing if you're playing an A7 here. But you're right here, we're focusing on the um, the C shape. Major seven, down with seven. So this is the framework right here. This chord this chord is the framework, and we're work basing everything around it. There's so much you can do in this one area, and it's pretty cool to, to know that. So I want to play a major 7 chord. I do that. I want to play a dominant 7 chord. I do that. So it's really cool to know those basic three chords. Regular A chord, major 7 chord. Dominant seven chord. It's pretty much every chord you're ever going to use, really, in, in, in 
a lot of cases, not every court, I want to say that. I get in trouble for saying that, but uh, in most cases, you know, we won't worry about it too much today, but if we wanted to play a minor chord, we could just make it a minor. Play Stairway to Heaven right there, you know? <laughs> all right, so it's all in this one shape, the C shape that we all know and love. The C chord. But over here to A. Of course, I'm trying, I'm trying to stay in tune as much as I can. You know, have the air conditioning off so everything gets warm and muggy inside here. So we're just gonna go ahead and um, tune for for your pleasure. And uh, you know, I want to make you happy. So I'll I'll try to get as close as I can here, tuning wise. And the guitar is not a perfect instrument, nor am I a perfect human being. So we do what we can do here to get as close as possible. And if you're ever out of tune, you just keep you just keep tuning until until eventually you'll get in. <laughs> eventually, it may take a lifetime, but uh, you'll get there. And my, you know, I'm a real big intonation fanatic, you know. So, one of the most important things to me is just being in tune. And I always talk about that bending in tune. Hopefully you're still with me out there. You're enjoying this. If you are, like, hit the like button. We're going to get into some good stuff right now. Now that I gave you the fundamental framework of this, we're going to show you some cool things that you could do with it. We're only staying in this one shape, so don't get crazy on me and start wailing out all over the neck. We're right here today, ladies and germs. Ladies and gentlemen, we're right here. Paul is um, using XS, not XL. Is that the string type? Is that your strings? XS? XLs? I don't know. What does that mean there, Paul? Well, I take a sip of my coffee. You could answer that for me. Ah, such good coffee. Mm. So, all right. In this shape, we got some scales right out of here. We'll start with the most basic. Oh, yes? Okay, Paul, you're agreeing. Paul says yes about his strings. Excess. I tend to use excess. I, you know, I don't know what I'm saying. Excess. I go to excess. I'm excess in my, in my life. Excessive. <laughs> and uh, that's funny. Same brand, what, Diodario? Check this out. Pentatonic scale, A pentatonic. Like the third position of the pentatonic. You know, you got pentatonic right here. You have pentatonic right here. Now I'm talking major pentatonic here which I don't really play all that much of. So if I hit a few bad notes, forgive me. <laughs> Should be very common. Which is basically the same thing as, you know, F sharp minor pentatonic. Same notes. But I'm just thinking A major pentatonic. Do all of your different runs that you do, but it's all based around here. So if you're ever up here playing something real pretty, play that major seven chord. Let's play the scale that goes along with it.
We got that one, pentatonic. We have the major scale right up there, right in the same position. You know, backstepping a second, this is the third position of the major pentatonic scale, by the way. You have the one here, you know. That's pretty common. You have this one. Then you have this one. I do have a video that I made on the uh, five positions of the pentatonic scale. It might have been the, ma the minor pentatonic, but I'll put a, the link in the description for that. But this whole position is basically right here. And why is that? Because it fits right around this, this chord perfectly. So if you're playing that pentatonic position, you have all these notes. Check it out. Let's play this backing track for a second. Just, just the um, A pentatonic. All pentatonic, right up over that. A oh, close up, slow. All right, let's do this a little bit, a little bit more. This pentatonic. It's just an A shuffle. Here's the shape. I'm playing the C chord. Or oh, it says A chord, but in the C shape, right? Pentatonic skip. intervals. You have the root, the second, the third, the fifth, and the sixth. Those are the five notes.
So that's the major pentatonic scale in that position. And of course you can play the major scale. Major scale. All in this position. If you're thinking it's like I gotta play the major scale here, I'm right here. You may think you only know it in one position. You may know it here. You don't wanna have to go down there if you're already up here. Run the major the major scale here. Very simple, very simple stuff. You have the pentatonic over here, and um, Joe, oh Joe, so many Joes, but we got John, Lesisco, how you doing, what do you recommend for double stuff? Well, I'm gonna get to that, but you got in the same position, you have um, stuff like that, which is really cool, that you could do in this one position, double stops. like that. If Ben's here like and stuff, you know, we'll get into like stuff like that. So over the major like this, you could do Ben's like Double stops, which works really nicely over this. Double stop. It's right in this shape on this A chord, the C shape A chord. So here's the the A. It's so important to know what the intervals are. You have your root, third, fifth, root again. Here's your A note. So if you have the A and the fifth and the E. You could take this note, the second, and bend it up, bending it up to this note, to C sharp, to the third degree. 
then hit this note, the E. Then you have that famous, you know, famous country lick that everyone, everyone knows and loves. You know, right up here. I love that one. You know, all this stuff right here, like. So, cool stuff right there. All based around this um, A chord. Scott Olson. Extra spicy country look. Yeah, that is a spicy country look right there. I totally love it. It's very popular. That's a good one too. But we'll get to that one in a second because we're, we're kind of keeping it we're kind of going from light to dark. We're, we're doing very major, very major sounding. Play the major scale. All in the same space. Like all this is all in this one position. here. It's another A major 7 chord. Check that out. Basically taking this chord, because I know these intervals. I know the roots, the third, the fifth, the octave again. So when you make a major 7 chord, all you're doing is you're taking the, the octave and you're dropping it a half step. So it's an easy position right here. From there, just drop it. Now you have an A major 7 chord. Same thing as here. This one you have the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh. Here you have the root, the third, the seventh, and you have the, the octave again. Just different inversions of the same notes, but they sound a little different. That one compared to this one. You have it over here too. But we're not getting into the uh, this position. We're staying here. I'm trying to stay disciplined here. <laughs> All right. So hopefully you're still with me out there. You're enjoying this. If you are, smash the like button. Hammer on the, the like button. And uh, ring the bell for notifications. Subscribe to the channel. I like groovy stuff. So I'm having a good time here doing this. So, um, you know. What we could do is, um, you know, we could play the um, the Mixolydian scale over this. Because, you know, we played the major 7 chord. But if we play the uh, dominant 7 chord, you're just dropping it. Right there. Hello, Roger Charlie! Let's give you a round of applause. Good to see you. All right. Check this out, I'll give you a closer up look. And this A chord right here. If we take this note, move it up to here. Now we have an A7 in this position. Which usually, you know, kind of leads to you know, in the blues type of thing. So if you wind up doing that a lot. But the scale that we usually like to use over that, use like a Mixolydian scale, which is like a little different than major, because the major scale was this 
This major seventh is no longer there. It's more of it's a dominant seventh, so it's gonna be a G note. So now it's instead of hitting this, I'm hitting this. And you can do it over the same chord because this rhythm backing track is just an A shuffle. I'm just hitting the A and the fifth. So it's so open to do anything. I could even play like a minor thing if I want to, but check this out. Here's the shuffle. I can play the mixolydian. Here's the A7 chord. It's the sound of the blues right here, right? The A7. country like Playing a little mix of, oh, well actually that was for Than Newts. That uh, unexpected applause there, that I hit by accident, but I'll give it to you. How you doing? Oi! Ayo. <laughs> so uh, playing this A chord. I'm playing A7, just taking the, uh, it's not just a regular A triad. In the seventh degree. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Flat seven right there. So hopefully you're getting this. Hopefully uh, you're getting some cool out of this right here. We got a little bit left to go on here. And uh, having a good time. Just playing. What would you rather be doing on a, on a Sunday afternoon? Nothing. You'd rather be here with me, hanging out, playing guitar. <laughs> so... All kinds of really cool, fun stuff. And if you want this backing track that I created, just email me at info at Jerry Cherry, and I'll shoot it right over to you. So uh, I made this, I created this, so all good with that. And, you know, another thing we could do is we could just play the A minor. Let's move on to the next scale, and it's the A minor pentatonic that we all know and love, but it's in this position. Check this out. Playing an A major chord, we're going to play the A minor pentatonic like we normally do over the blues. Right? Check it out. OK. 
Okay? You may know this over here, like everyone knows it. Which is great. But you may be over here. You might be... It sounds different up here. Doesn't it? I think this is the meat of the guitars right here in the middle. Right in the middle of the guitar. It sounds the best, you know? Not the best, but it has a certain sound to it. You know, right about... Um, a certain bite. Right, listen to that. to here. Check it out. Listen to here. Sounds different, completely different sound, a little thicker. But the one thing you gotta remember, I'm playing like a blues type of bass thing, you don't really wanna sit on the minor too long. Although, over this chord, let's see how it works. Here's the minor pentatonic. Let's go. in there. minor into the third. So here. So over this chord, this um, C-shape A chord. Bending right into this chord. Kind of micro bending, so I'm not going up all the way. That would be all the way. 
into the major third. Which is cool, but you don't have to go. All right. So, we got a little bit left here. A little bit left in the tank. We're going to do a, an arpeggio. No, just like... Um, really pretty sounding right there so any questions about any of this stuff let me know if you're getting anything hopefully you are scott you got a can sound page like yeah well apparently he used to tally on um, a lot of his recordings this is the disco band i play in by the way it's called disco unlimited and they call me wild jerry <laughs> I can get pretty wild, I'm telling you. <laughs> All right. So I want to take just a quick minute before we get into the final part of this lesson. Just tell you about my, um, my course that I have, my guitar course. It's called the Essential Skills Collection for Guitar. Uh, you can get it at jerrycherry.com slash courses. And there's three aspects of the, of the course. Fretboard memorization, where I teach how to quickly memorize the fretboard. Circle of fifths which is that circle that looks like a pizza pie or a steering wheel, right? <laughs> and that's all music lies in that circle right there. I, I give a whole deep dive into the circle and how to use it. And then we get into the blues. And there's tons of backing tracks and charts on there. So I'll put a link at the top of my description or in my description so you can check that out. Please do when you get a chance. And uh, all right, so going back here to this, to this final part, um, we have arpeggios. Okay, I mean, I showed you the, um, you have the major pentatonic scale. If you want to be happy over this progression. The minor. If you want to be a little sadder, a little more bluesier. All over the same chord, all in the same position. You know? Now I'll we'll get to the final part where it's an arpeggio. Thank you very much. Paul, it's very cool of you. You say good course. Thank you. Give a round of applause. For that. Now, an arpeggio is basically just the the chord tones of the chord. If we're playing this major seven chord, or this one right here, you have the root, the third, the fifth, the seventh, and the octave right there. So you would just basically play those those notes. sounds really cool over this progression. Check it out. Just to play on those notes.
That's a major arpeggio right there. It's a major arpeggio. And one that you can use over the major chord. Because, you know, like I was saying, you have this chord. And there's lots of different tonalities and a harmony to it. It's either going to be happy and major, major scale. Or it's going to be dominant. Which is going to be a dominant scale. You know, real bluesier thing. So the arpeggio's got to change a little bit. So it's going to sound like that. over this progression. So these are your target notes if you're soloing. different um ooh, my neck just got stiff from staring at my neck <laughs> so uh totally different sound right there jer devil oh, this is my Steelers bro right here what's happening jer let's go give you a round of applause all right so we're rocking orlando lazaro lazar lazar oh my god i'm like dyslexic this is weird to say. Lazar Azo. Lazar Azo. I'm sorry. Lazar Azo. I just need some more coffee. Maybe I'll be able to pronounce that correctly. Orlando, thank you very much for hanging out with me here for a little bit today. We're, we're close to wrapping it up, but give a round of applause. So, it's hard sometimes to just pick up the guitar and just um, focus on one thing. And that's what we did today. We played this chord right here. It's an A chord, but it looks like a C chord because it's a C shape. So it's really cool. So you play this cowboy chord, the C chord, right? If you know that, you can take this chord and just kind of slide it, you know, same shape to the A note, 
So now it's an A chord. You can play all kinds of stuff over this. Play the A pentatonic scale. A major scale. All right? You play the Mixolydian scale, which sounds more of a dominant. Sounds like this. Same shape. I'm not really going crazy here. I'm not moving around. I'm just playing the same thing. You have the uh, the minor pentatonic or blues. some arpeggios, make it sound happy again, this A major 7 chord, what you got, oh you have the uh, arpeggio, the dominant 7, arpeggio, Target notes. my favorite licks aren't in this position but that's a really good problem because now it's like you work on this one position yeah I'd like to go to here you know play all my favorite licks but it's good to work on an area that you're, you're not as familiar with at least with me I'm not as familiar with this and so there's five different positions like this different shapes that we'll get into eventually but for now, it's the first one, the C shape. So, uh, all right, well, we went uh, our normal time here. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. I go live every Sunday at 12 o'clock. Send me some ideas, please, whatever you want me to do. I probably won't do it, but send them anyway. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love taking your ideas. I, I use all of your ideas all the time. Thank you. So thank you, Peck of the Blues. Thanks, Need to Leave. Well, you rock. Give you a... Round of applause for that. Thank you. So good seeing all of you. I love you. I look forward to doing this every week. And uh, yeah, really cool, Paul. I spent a few grand on a rock. I spent, what are you saying here? I spent a few grand on a rock next Friday. It's D Day. Okay. All right. Very, very cool. And uh, Joe Devil, so good to see you. Orlando, excellence. Uh, it means a lot. Thank you for checking in and hanging out for a little bit here with us scott olson thank you guys for hanging out paul and um Thanut, ayo so good seeing you everyone that's who comes every week and some new people i appreciate it come back again 
John, a lot of these people I've seen a few times. You pop in when you can. I appreciate that so much. I love playing guitar. I know you do too. Or you wouldn't be here. I love listening to it. Hopefully you gain something out of this. If you want this backing track, let me know. I'll email it right over to you. I have it. Take two seconds to do. And uh, just sit here with the C chord, the C shape. Think of all those different things. Major pentatonic, minor pentatonic, C7, C major 7. So much you could do over that. Next thing you know, you'll be in D. You'll be like, oh, I know all these different, I know it's the same stuff. You know, over the D, D pentatonic, D major pentatonic. The arpeggio. Minor, you know. Mixolydian. You know? So it's really um same thing. You know all these shapes. I should have mentioned that. This one shape, everything we just learned is transferable. All the licks, the scales, the, the modes, whatever. So that's the beauty of this. It's really, really amazing. Really cool stuff. And thank you, Alba, for uh, hanging out with us as well. All right. So guys, from Colombia, Orlando. All right, Colombia. Salute. Des... I don't know what that means, but I, I like it, the way it sounds. Saludos. Des... Let's see. I'll try to pronounce this correctly. Saludos. Desti Colombia. All right. Give you a round of applause for that. And on that note, I love you guys. I'll put another video right up there with some other cool stuff that you could listen to and have fun with. But for now, be cool, be kind, and be cherry. I'll see you in the next video. And send those comments. Let me know what you want me to do for next week. Love yous. Peace. Have a great Sunday. Ciao, y'all. That's the wrong button. It's over here. I don't know what I'm doing. Love yous. Ha, ha, ha.